You start off with uranium, natural uranium, that you dig out of the ground. Natural uranium is actually quite abundant. How much do you need to make a bomb? 15 to 18 kilograms. Well, let's see. Density of uranium is about 15 to 18, something like that. So 15 to 18 kilograms would be one liter. So how do you get this uranium? As I said, it's, it's not hard to get the uranium. You can do it from granite. Nobody bothers. You go to uranium ores. But then what you get is natural uranium, which is uranium-238. Uranium-238 is 99.3%. And then the uranium-235, which is mixed in with it, is 0.7%. How do you, now, if you keep them mixed, it will not work. The reason it won't work is very important. When the chain reaction starts and these neutrons fly off, most of the neutrons will be grabbed by the uranium-238. And when they do that, you don't get the fission. Actually, what happens when a neutron hits uranium-238 is an interesting thing. It turns to uranium-239. Uranium-239 decays. And then it decays again, and you're left with plutonium. So, a neutron on a uranium-238 gives you plutonium-239. There are a couple of decays that take place in the, pro in the process, but that's what you get. This is how you get plutonium. You get plutonium by making it from uranium-238. So, you start with natural uranium. If you can make the chain reaction going, you can manufacture plutonium. If you want a bomb, you manufacture plutonium and then you extract it. If you want to extract the uranium-235, it's hard to do. Lawrence, after whom the Lawrence Berkeley Lab was named, came up with a way of doing this during World War II. He thought, and we'll talk, you know, this is, he used an electromagnetic method. The idea was you build a big tank, you vaporize your uranium, you ionize it so it has a charge, you run it through a magnetic field, and it turns out the uranium-235 will bend in the magnetic field a little bit more than the uranium-238. So here's the 235, here's the 238. So then you take this plate and you scrape off the uranium-235 and you do it again. And he did this, was able to produce a little bit of pretty pure uranium-235. Did that here at Berkeley. He had to come up with a name for it. So he decided he would honor the University of, Cali of California and call it a cal utron. The thing worked well, and so General Groves had dozens of these things built in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where by 1945, summer of 1945, they had separated out enough uranium for one bomb, which they put into the Hiroshima bomb. They never tested it and dropped it over Hiroshima, killing 50 to 150,000 people. After the war, the calutrons were basically not good ways to make uranium. They started using different things. They cried gaseous diffusion. The real secret of gaseous diffusion was classified until recently. But the gaseous diffusion plants in Oak Ridge, Tennessee were huge. We, we, we produced enormous amounts of uranium with buildings that were a mile long. That's the size of these buildings. And they were gaseous diffusion. What you do there is you heat up the gas, you take uranium, mix it with fluorine, make uranium hexafluoride. You don't have to know these details, but you'll come across them in the news. They talk about, about North Korea, no, I guess it's Iran, Iran, having uranium hexafluoride. And we don't even like them to have uranium hexafluoride. Uranium hexafluoride is a gas. You don't have to heat it up very much to have it into a gas. And then by running it through the magic material, it turns out that because the light elements move faster, and so it comes out the end first. Subsequent to that, they came up with a, with a centrifuge. Again, it's a gas centrifuge. Now, you'll hear a lot about centrifuges. Centrifuges are basically spinning tubes in which the heavier uranium, heavier uranium hexafluoride, tends to go to the outer part. They spin these things very fast, as fast as they can. To make it work well, you have to go super fast. I mean, the edge of this thing is going, going a kilometer per second. That's how fast they're spinning. The design of how you build that is really highly classified. Uh, a few people have figured it out. There was a um, Pakistani scientist, A.Q. Kwan, who had the designs for this. He sold them to Libya and to North Korea. And, uh, 
and has gotten a great degree of infamy for having done this. We found out about it because Libya decided uh, maybe it makes more sense now that the Soviet Union is not around to be friends with the U.S. instead of enemies. So they decided they would stop trying to make an atomic bomb. We'll open up, show you everything we have. We go in there and say, oh, these are interesting designs. What's the signature AQ Kwan here down at the bottom? Khan. And um, he, he was, so uh, he was traced to Pakistan. He was their chief bomb minister over there. And so he was uh, thrown out and then uh, basically his sentence was commuted by the president. So he gets no punishment. I, I suspect the reason that happened, this is, this, this is not physics, I'm just giving you idle speculation now, is that of course he didn't do that on his own. It was the whole Pakistani government who was doing it. Um, and so he wasn't really responsible, but the Pakistani government wants to come across as good guys, so they bl had someone to blame. But anyway, that's the gas centrifuge. There are other advanced ways too. There's the laser enrichment, which has actually been accomplished at Livermore, but doesn't seem to be. And the whole idea here is to turn 0.7% into 90, 95, 100% uranium-235, because otherwise it won't work in the bomb. Now, a little story. There was lots of reason to think in 1990 that Saddam Hussein was designing nuclear bombs. I mean, it turned out he was, okay. But people forget this because they confuse it with what happened in 2000. In 2000, we thought we were going to go in there and find all of his bomb stuff, and there's nothing there. He had dismantled it. And so people say he wasn't doing it, which is true. But in 1990, he was. And people had been searching, and people sometimes, oh, by the way, people forget that President Carter, President uh, uh, Clinton bombed Baghdad in, 19, no, in, in 1998. Bombed Baghdad in 1998 to destroy the nuclear facilities that he was suspected were there. That was in 1998. A little bit more of history that we tend to forget. He thought there were nuclear things going on there too. But part of the reason was in 1990, we had searched for every possible thing. We, they had looked for gas diffusion plants. Had some suspicious looking things. But gas diffusion plants were big and they really didn't fit. Gas centrifuges, that was the way to go. He was probably doing gas centrifuges, I looked around, but the gas centrifuges are so easy to hide. They fit in rooms smaller than this. They're high tech, and so you try to look for people who are sending in meraging steel, but you can use other types of steel. So there was no clear gas centrifuge plant. Laser enrichment, he didn't seem to have the right kind of scientist to, to do laser enrichment. So it was a big mystery. If he's doing a bomb program, what is he doing? Anyway, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The U.S. went in, retook Kuwait, decided not to, well, actually reached an accommodation with Saddam. They would not invade Baghdad. They would leave him in power in return for detailed and complete inspections. Back then, he allowed the U.N. to come in and give detailed and complete inspections. And what came was a shock to me. He was building devices to purify uranium. The UN found them. I have a photograph. It wasn't gas diffusion, it wasn't gas centrifuge, it wasn't laser enrichment. Here's a photograph. The UN found these devices. They were for uranium enrichment. It destroyed them. This is one of the blown up ones. Blown up by the United Nations. That's actually a calutron, the primitive technology that was used in World War II and then abandoned because there were so much better ways to do it. But Saddam Hussein, with his limited resources of only you know, a few billion dollars he could spare, and his limited scientific expertise, had gone back to the easiest way to do it, the way Lawrence had done it, named after your university, Saddam Hussein built calutron.